your career will expand in the name of Jesus in the name we are going to pray they were fruitful despite the fact that they were in a land where they were oppressed but the Bible says they were fruitful they increased abundantly wax mighty and the land was filled with them lift up your hands in the name of you are going to pray and say Lord I am a covenant child and therefore I pray for fruitfulness I pray for abundant increase I pray for greatness I pray that I will expand to everywhere that my name needs to be say father oh let me hear a voice say father in the name of Jesus this morning I thank you for the opportunity to pray as I pray clap in my hands I declare that my life shall be fruitful I declare increase I declare greatness I declare that my name shall be heard all over the world my business shall be heard all over the world as I clap my hands and pray I release the anointing clap your hands and begin to pray and they were fruitful this morning you are praying for fruitfulness in the name of Jesus they were fruitful in the name of Jesus Father make me fruitful in the name of Jesus I declare increase of God and the land was filled with them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, expand me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let my name, my business, oh God, in the name of Jesus, be heard, oh God. There is a covenant of fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. I pray that the covenant blessing of fruitfulness will come to me. The covenant blessing of inquiry in the name of Jesus. The covenant blessing of greatness in the name of Jesus. Father, O God, this man, I shall be fruitful in my going out. I shall be fruitful in my coming in. I shall be fruitful in whatsoever I do in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 18, 20 and 21, that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips and with the, the fruit of his mouth and the, with the increase of his lips shall he be what? Filled. Death and life lieth in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. This morning, I want to give you an opportunity. You want to speak life. I say you want to speak life. In the coming week, whatsoever you declare with your mouth, may you be filled with it. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that my mouth is anointed. My hands are anointed. As I clap and declaring, Oh God, let me see favor in the coming week. Let me receive a testimony in the name of Jesus. Let me receive good news as I clap and pray. Let everything turn around for my good. Clap your hands and declare, Father, I declare, I declare favor. I declare goodness and mercy. I declare testimonies. I declare good news. I declare 
victory. I declare safety in the name of Jesus. Kata yoloba, iriba sando yoloba, akata yoloba, ando yoloba ba yeriba, akata yoloba, ando yoloba, iri akata yoloba, ando yoloba ba yeriba. I declare success in whatever I do. I declare my business of God. Oh God, take another dimension in the name of Jesus. I declare my going on this blast. I declare my coming in this blast. I declare the hand of the Lord is with me. I declare that His hand will see me through. In the name of Jesus. Lastly, want to pray. Want to pray for the entire church. As we get to the end of the year, there's so much increase in demonic activities. But we want to pray that anyone who is named amongst us we will be in the safety boat of the Lord. Just as Noah and his family were calling to the safety boat that was the ark, we pray that anybody who is named amongst us, no evil shall come near them. Our going out to be preserved. Our coming in will be preserved. Say, Father, together as a church, we lift up every member in the name of Jesus. We declare that our going out is preserved. Our coming in is preserved. As we pray, release your covering, your protection over our lives as a church, as individuals. As families, clap your hands and begin to pray. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the covering of the Lord, the covering of the Lord, the protection of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We declare that, Lord, we will go out in safety. We will come back in safety. Protect us in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Kata yoloba, kata yoloba ba yereba, ande yoloba, he kata yoloba. The blood of Jesus will be our covering in the name of Jesus. No evil shall come near our dwelling in the name of Jesus. We are covered, we and our families, both home and abroad, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. You are a prayer answering God. This morning, we thank you. That the covenant blessings of fruitfulness, increase, greatness shall come upon our lives. By the time the month is ending, Father, give us a testimony. Father, give us a testimony in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare over your church that in the coming week, may your people enjoy favor. In the coming week, may good news come to you. In the coming week, may you have a testimony, a song to sing unto the Lord. May the Lord turn everything around for your good. If you believe it, say, I believe it and receive it. Jesus' name, amen. Shall we take our seats as kings and queens in the presence of God? Amen. It is time for us to bring the various envelopes we are supposed to bring to God, a thanksgiving envelope you want to bring to God, you are here to redeem a tithe, or there is something you want to sow into, the seed faith envelope is there, you can pick it and sow it, and those of us who came forward to pick a pledge, you know, concerning the Zerubbabel project that our daddy raised, if you have that envelope right behind it, the Zerubbabel project, and bring it. He started and said that if we could get thousand, and he came down. Some pledge thousand, five hundred, you know, whatever amount you pledge, please write behind that envelope the Zerubbabel project. And when the choir begins to sing, the protocol ladies will line up, you will drop your envelope, and I believe that God will honor his side of the bargain. Amen. Help me welcome the anointed choir one more time, even as the leaders. Put your hands together. He that comes to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of them that 
diligently seek him. You must believe that he is. That he is what? A father Christmas that you come to anytime you need something and ask him. A wicked headmaster waiting for you to make a mistake so he can pull out his cane to hit you. Or a merely ceremonial chief. That is not really relevant in our daily lives. But we pull him out only for ceremonies, for weddings, for Easter. Or is the mighty God who holds the heavens and the earth. And he affects every aspect of our life. And his power is simply unlimited. That is the God that we serve. He's the mighty God. Onuni Okokorokono. Hetty Maoli humbles us. Among the gods there is none. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Yamawusu. Thank you very much. May I now call to your attention for the following announcements. October 2016, our month of enlargement and greatness. Kindly take note of the following. Monday, new convert classes at 6 p.m. Tuesday, intercessors prayer meeting at 6.30 p.m. at the Travelling Chapel. Wednesday, midweek service. The Wednesday teaching service continues on the theme, the gospel of, sal the gospel of your salvation. 
Romans 1, 16. Join us every Wednesday at 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. at the Rebel Temple as we learn more about our salvation. Thursday, prophetic encounter from 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the Traveling Chapel. Marriage counseling classes at 6.30 p.m. at the Crystal Hall. Friday, the Breakthrough and Prophetic Prayer Service comes off this Friday at the Rehobo Temple at 6 p.m. Come, let us travel in prayer to receive our breakthroughs and every expectations of our heart. Remember, prayer answers all things. The Men's Ministry Expo 2016. All church members are encouraged to visit the ongoing Men's Ministry Expo after the service and patronize the services and goods on display. Men's Ministry Expo, empowering businesses to experience growth. School of Ministry Registration. Registration for the next batch of School of Ministry is in progress. All church members who haven't gone through the school should kindly register at Information Desk B after close of service. Classes has begun and it is on every Monday and Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at the Crystal Hall. All ministries, departments, and services are to submit their dates for their programs in 2017 to the resident pastor, latest November 13, 2016. This is, to enable the, this is to enable them put together the programs and activities for the church in the coming year. Thank you all very much and enjoy the service. Thank you. Hallelujah. We want to come before God and worship. Can we please be on our feet? Hallelujah. Okay. Please put your hands together for mama. Can we sit down then briefly? Then we'll continue. I sincerely apologize for that. But we have the bands of marriage between Mr. Daniel Dompe of Sem and Miss Lydia Portia. Miss Lydia Porto of Redeemed Church of God, Maranatha Parish, Adenta Frafraha. Their date is the 5th of November 2016. The venue is the Redeemed Church of God, Maranatha Parish, Adenta, and the time is 10.30 a.m. Then between Mr. Gordon Atsu, Wutsika of Tesano Baptist Church, Tesano, and Miss Diana Efua Akini of SEM. They are getting married on the 5th of November, 2016. The venue would be the Travelling Chapel, and the time is 1 p.m. Then between Mr. Joseph Kwaku Kuvo of SEM and Miss Susie of Osio Adako, Susie is from Calvary Christ, Calvary Christian Church Circle. Their date is the 29th of October. The venue will be the Calvary Christian Center at Circle Accra, and the time is 11 a.m. Then between Mr. Godfrey Disa of Sem and Ms. MFA Wonyo of Evangelical Royal Generation Church at Adabraka, We also have Mr. Patrick Amenovo of SEM and Ms. Susanna Jima of Temple of Christ Baptist, Baptist Church, Medina. Patrick and Susanna are getting married on the 22nd of October, 
that is this coming Saturday. The venue will be Temple of Grace Baptist Church, Medina, and the time is 8 a.m. So please take note. So congregation, once again, these are the lovely ones getting married. If you know of any reasons why they can't get married, please let us know. Our quote for the day is, true love isn't found, it's built. True love isn't found, it's built. You hear people saying, I fell in love. Once you, when you fall in love, remember that you must work it out. It's not just enough to fall in love. Everybody can fall in love. But to, you need to work to maintain the feeling of love. It's very important. <laughs> when you are caught in, you take time. Your appearance. If you're a man and you even have to borrow. Have to, some even go to the stand of showing people's house, homes. And saying that is my father's house. All to impress the lady. Ladies will go to all extent to look sharp or to impress the man. When you, when you eventually settle, there is maintenance. Anything you don't maintain would automatically die. Sometimes it's the lack of maintenance that kills the romance, that destroys relationships. And the marriage can die, it can go into a coma, all kinds of things. The love can just vanish. Because the way you are treating the lady so nicely... That same lovely lady, if you change, she will change. Yeah. If you change, you will see the other side of midnight. You will see what she's really made of. The same way to you, the lady, if you change, you know what the man is made of. So we are all working it out. We are all working at it. We are all work in progress. Let's have patience and time for each other. You haven't made a mistake with that marriage you are in. Take time to build it. Work on it. Tell somebody, work on it. Ask yourself, what are you contributing to the relationship? If you go home, take pen and paper and make a personal assessment yourself. Sit down and, and, and write down your contribution to this relationship. What am I contributing? A, B, C, D. See if you can get 10 or 15 points. And then your partner should also write it. If you have time and you are in a good mood, exchange it. And know what everybody is contributing. If you are in deficit, it means there's something wrong. You can't be in a relationship and every day one person is striving to make it work. You don't care. You know there are some people like that. They don't care. They are just in it. This is a new baby. You've had a new baby today. You don't care how the baby grows. Your baby will die. It needs attention. It needs care. It needs nurturing. There should be maintenance. So when you marry, check it out. Is it only one party who is on the relationship, striving to make the marriage work? Always the one who wants to get things right. One person is dormant. You don't care. As a matter of fact, if you are dating somebody and it is one-sided, run for your life. In three, they say what? Guan. One fast because all the cause is you, all the investment is you, all the care is it shouldn't be one sided. When you love each other and you both want the relationship to work, we work it out together. Remember, we are all work in progress. When you marry, take time with each other. There's no special anything, anyway. It is how you handle the person. That's it. God bless you. Please, let's do it better for mommy. We are all work in progress. That's very true. I was sharing with first service this morning. The Friday of the just worship in the morning, I was on my way to work. And by the roadside, I saw this sugar bread. Long time, I've not eaten some. So I said, let me buy some in the afternoon, then I will take some tea with it. So I bought it, and I joined the normal road. In just about two minutes, all I heard behind me was pam, pam, pam. Then the car behind me just veered off and was driving straight to the other 
you know, cars coming. And I saw behind me a trotro had hit a car in front. The other one too had hit the other one. So the third one was the one behind me and the guy fled off. And all of a sudden, it just occurred to me that I could have, my car, I could have been the one that Trotro would have hit that very morning. It was just a split of minutes that God delivered me. And I saw people were rushing out of the car, blood all over the place. And I said, God is good. Has God been good to somebody here? Many deliverance God takes us out from. But sometimes he allows us to see so that we'll know and appreciate him. Hallelujah. This morning, we want to worship God. This morning, we want to thank God for the deliverance, for, the, for his goodness, for his mercies, for his love, for his protection. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say something to God this morning. Odo Borosu Na Yesu Dia Domi Oh, awesome. 
Casting crown, casting crown. 
all ye people. Bless the name of the Lord. Give the Lord a mighty shout. Oh. 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 You reign on high. You reign on we thank you for a special time of worship such a time that we give unto you we want to stay in your presence for in your presence there is fullness of joy for there, in your presence there is healing there is joy, there is peace in your presence and we know that Lord you continue to reign on high in our lives in Jesus name Amen and Amen can I hear somebody give the Lord a mighty hand and a mighty shout? See, man. You know, a friend of mine, very great friend of mine, uh, in North Carolina, uh, he, had a, he had a problem, went into coma for 29 days. When he came out of coma, his hands and legs were black like charcoal. Black. You know that they say? My wife and I were there in a hospital in North Carolina. We visited him in the hospital because he's a great friend. He's been here before. And his hands were black and cold. He was on life support. So many machines wired to his body. Then he called me and said, Reverend, he calls me Papa. He said, Papa Steve, say yeah. He said, The doctors are saying to save my life, they have to amputate my hands and my legs. So they cut off both legs, cut off both hands. 
You know what he said to me? He said, Reverend, I can't clap anymore. Yeah. So when I say clap, eh, and you have your two hands, eh, <laughs> you don't know. Say, I can't clap. Yeah. Yeah. Say, I can't clap anymore. He said, I can't walk, but they are going to fit prosthesis for me. Then a certain woman heard of his case and came to him at the hospital and said, I have heard of your case. I am an expert, the number one woman in hand transplant. Hand transplant. I haven't heard of it before that day. I know they, trans, they transplant heart, liver, but hand. Somebody will just die. They cut off the hand. Come and join it to your hand. It's called hand transplant. <laughs> so you'll be walking there. Eh? You'll be walking around, but the hands are not yours. The guy who owns your hands is dead. You see, when your hands is around you, you don't value it. You don't value it until they cut it off. He said, he said, Reverend, to save my life, they have to cut off my hands and my legs. So sometimes when you come to church, forget about all your problems outside. Forget about all the challenges. Forget about what your husband is saying and what he's not saying. Forget about what your wife is doing. Just forget about the curse of this world. And fall in love with Jesus all over again. And let the Holy Ghost deal with the issues. But cast your crown by your heart. Sing and worship him. But there is nothing compared to the gift of life. You know, I was in Koforidia. Um, see, um, on Friday, convention came back here. For two weddings and then the men's the men's um, whatever I then drove back to Koforidua yesterday went and did an impartation service the whole place was jammed then I finished had something to eat by 12 something in the night my driver and I alone were driving no car going no car coming hey <laughs> no human being no. no car going no car coming just the two of us up to 1 a.m. The two of us, we're just singing in tongues and praying to the angels are because where we are, no, anybody can cross us or anything. We drove uh, go to Eburi. When we go to Eburi, there was something happening at Eburi. I said, I don't know what was. They came, jammed the streets. They won't let us pass. We put on our siren. No, I have a siren in my car. It's a very wild siren. We, 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 we. Then they thought that it was some heavy government official they came in. They started giving away. They started giving away. These were drunkards. They are guys. I don't know what happened. They have done with some Rastafarian people. They refused to open. They were in the road with their beard. It's like, whatever you are coming to do, you are not going. When we put the sarin on with tongues, katapayaka, then they started opening the door. And the Lord brought me home safely yesterday. I thank God. Yeah. So anytime you come to church, remember what could have happened to you. Remember what could have happened to you in the aircraft, on the land, in the car, going to work in the morning? He said, oh, he went to work in the morning. When he was just negotiating a cab, then a throttle from nowhere. And now, we are visiting you at the mortuary, planning your funeral. But God forbid. Say amen. So worship the Lord, sing his praise, kneel down, bow your heart. Don't, don't look at time. Don't for, for, forget about time. You can spend your time in the hospital sick. Somebody sent me a WhatsApp this morning. And the WhatsApp says, he said, he said Daddy, please forgive me. And I said, Who is asking for forgiveness this morning like that? Well, what have I done to anybody? Forgive me. I didn't know. Then, to, then she said, to, to, you know, They said, To her is human. Then, but she wrote it. He wrote it to her. H E R. To her is human. <laughs> To forgive is divine. That's all really. So I I expanded the picture because this was a guy and his leg was in POP. 
lying in the hospital with some pins in it. I don't know who the person was. And I, I opened it, and there was a certain guy. He was there. And, I'm, and I typed and said, I don't know what you are talking about. It means that he has maybe gone to use his tongue to go and say something bad about somebody else. I don't know. So because why are you asking me to forgive you in hospital? Be careful what you say to people. Be careful. When you, when you wake up in the morning, don't quarrel with anybody. Don't quarrel with anybody. Quarrel with your wife or your husband. That's all. Say amen. Wow. Today I want to start another series of preaching. I want to title Walking with God. Walking with God. And walking with God is one of the most challenging aspects of our lives because God is so far away. God is so complex. God is so, sometimes can be some way that we, we are like ants walking with the mighty God. So we need his grace to walk with him. And we thank God for Jesus who is our mediator, who is our strengthener, who comforts us, who makes it possible to walk with this holy God. Say amen. And so in our walk with God, I will talk about 10 ways you can walk with God. And this morning or this afternoon, I want to talk about walking in obedience with God. Walking in obedience with God. It's very important that we walk in obedience because if you can just obey, if you can just walk with God in obedience, you will enjoy God, you will enjoy life, you will have a problem a problem free life with God your problems will be very very minimal as far as your work with God is concerned most of the time our nature wants to disobey God our life wants to disobey God most of the time when we have children you can see that the children we are raising in the house they don't want to obey rules in the house they always want to go against set rules. Hallelujah. In my house, the children are supposed to sleep at seven. Their mother, I don't know where she got it from. Seven, they must sleep. When they hear seven, there's the TV3 news, then it means that it's bedtime. And the children get angry when they're going to sleep. And I'm like, why should they sleep at seven? He said, eh, when she was young, any time you hear, gulu, 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 it is a signal that you must go to bed. <laughs> and they are going to give the Ghana news. As soon as you hear it, but nobody will tell you because the, the gulu, gulu means, Charlie, go to bed. And she has brought it into our house and the children are rebelling against the seven o'clock sleeping. They will be annoyed. They will go and lie down, come and knock on our door, lie down again, pretend as if they have a headache. This one say, I have a headache, I need water, I need a drink, I need this. She said, oh, this is because they don't want to sleep at seven. And I said, my, 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 why, do they, why do they have to sleep at seven? Because me, when I was growing up, I didn't have to sleep at seven. Seven, I'm watching Simon Templar, the saint. Have you watched the saint before? Simon Templar, seven o'clock, GTV, Simon Templar. Then some zero people come upon some more templates. <laughs> and the Avengers. And this thing, Bonanza. Bonanza. Is it Bonanza? Zambroka. Bonanza. How do you call it? Huh? Oh, what's the name of that movie? Huh? Oh, remind, oh okay. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cowboy's movie. There are four of them. One is called Dambroka. Otherwise, it's called something, something. Yeah. You used to watch them. So, I don't know why. And they're always breaking all the rules. Don't go open the fridge. Anytime you want a drink, they tell them, anytime you want a drink, ask, ask for the drink. Ask, mommy, can I have a drink? They say yes before you drink it. So when they go to the, the fridge, they take a drink, they start drinking it. Mommy, can I have a drink? They say, but you're drinking already. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So you can see that in our nature, we always want to break rules. We always want to disobey laws. We always want to go against the word of God. And when you are a child in a house, and you are always walking disobedient, you will not be a happy child, because every time there will be canes, there will be so many things, sanctions, you can't go out again, and everything. Are you there? <laughs> every time you are, you are running into problems. When they, you know, I was telling the first service that when they prepare, when my mother prepares soups and things, stews and things, we will be steady, uh, we will be steady, steady in the night. Then Charlie, hunger, hunger. They will walk, we tiptoe into the kitchen like this. <laughs> tiptoe. <laughs> we'll open the soups. Then we take a spoon. And then look, the midnight we will boil rice that night now quietly and put soup on it. And eat. Then the following day, there will be foam <laughs> on the soup. There will be foam on the soup. There will be foam on the soup. Then they, then they will call me. First, they will call me first. Ata! <laughs> I can't. Kuma! <laughs> Then Stanley will come. Who came here yesterday night? <laughs> so, <laughs> have you seen anything? Then they will turn to Stanley. Stanley will look at me. And I'm like, why are you looking at me? They ask you a question. <laughs> they ask you a question. Answer the question. <laughs> because both of us, but brother, if you say you were the one who put them, what they would do to you? <laughs> Huh. What they will do? The sanction, the beatings. So we said no. We don't know. We, have, we weren't here. We didn't touch anything. Meanwhile, we have eaten. We have scraped the emotions. We have washed the plate quietly. We have not gone to sleep. It is always in our nature to always walk in disobedience. But we thank God for Jesus, who came and lived and obeyed all the Ten Commandments. And did not sin. And today, we are complete in him. His obedience to God has made us complete. So the Bible said in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. 18 and 19, the Bible said, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so... By the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So we are made righteous today by the obedience of one man. Say amen. If Jesus had disobeyed the Father, we would have all been in condemnation. But we thank God for Jesus, whose obedience has justified all of us. Say, I received that justification. The, the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8, you can write it down. The Bible said, Hebrews 5 8, the Bible said, Though he were a son, Though Jesus was a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Learn he obedience. Learn he obedience by the things which we sometimes obedience to obey is not very easy. It's very difficult, very challenging, and God will always ask you to do something that you are not willing to obey. But your obedience will bring you multiple blessings in life. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of Genesis, chapter number 22, we have a popular story there. I want you to look at that story again. Genesis 22, reading from verse number 1. You can turn to it if you have a quick Bible or an iPad. Genesis 22, reading from verse 1, the Bible said something. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy 
only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee. Hallelujah. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Hallelujah. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Amen. Well, I don't know what you would have done if God were to ask you to take your son, not just only your son, not just your son, but your only son whom thou lovest, and to sacrifice Him to him, to the Lord. I don't know, but I know that if God were to ask me such a thing, I will not be happy with God. And I am, I will be tempted to disobey him. Because after believing God for over 25 years, because Abraham was 75 years old when the Lord promised him a son, and now he had a son at the age of 100 years, and then the son had lived a little. More, I don't know how many years the son had lived for which God now doesn't want a ram, doesn't want a goat, doesn't want sheep, doesn't want giraffe, doesn't want tigers, but wants my son. Why does he want a son? Is that where you have got him to now? You want human beings? <laughs> I would have questioned the voice, I'm telling you. And Abraham didn't even mention it to his wife. Because if he had mentioned it to the wife, Sarah, Sarah would have said, then add me to the burnt offering. Add me to the burnt offering. Say amen. I don't know many women, I don't know whether many women would just allow their husbands to carry their son for a sacrifice. But Abraham took his son to servants and left ready to offer his son, his only son, whom he loves. Say amen. Then they got to the place when they were going, the son asked him, we've got everything here, matches, kerosene, wood, but there's no lamb for the sacrifice. Then he looked at the son and said, the Lord shall provide himself a lamb. Then they went, the Bible says, and they came in verse 9, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, yeah. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. Are you in the house? Yeah. Now I know. It means I want to know how far you are prepared to obey me. How far are you ready to to walk with God and obey? It is not easy to walk in obedience. Especially when God is asking you for certain things for you to do for him. The next verse, the Bible said, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram 
and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Your blessing is in your obedience. Do I have a witness in the house? I said your blessings is in your obedience. If you can obey God, you'll be blessed beyond your wildest imagination. If you can obey God, he will carry your life to the next level. Most of the time, it is in our nature to walk in disobedience. When the Lord is telling you to do something, you can feel that that your whole body system doesn't want to do it. The Lord will say, my daughter, if you can rise up every day at 4 a.m. and pray for one hour for the next 90 days, I will turn things around in your life. When it is 3.45 or you put the alarm and it's 4 a.m. and the alarm goes, say, yeah. You feel that that before the, the, the sweetness of the sleeping has come. He said, if you can just rise up and pray one hour a day for the next 90 days, I will use that prayer to turn, in, turn things around. But when you are lying down, Mike, when you are lying down and you must get up and wash your face and open your mouth and pray in tongues for one hour, it's not easy. We are not all, you see, the flesh, hello, hello, doesn't want to follow God. The flesh wants to sleep. The flesh wants to eat. Sometimes the Lord will say, my daughter, I want you to fast for the next 40 days and pray one hour a day because there is something I want to do in your life. Can you imagine breath, you are without breakfast for the next 40 days? If you are a kenke eater on, 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 in the morning, Eh? Like Kwabna, you know, Kwabna doesn't eat chicken and things. He likes kinke. You told me the other day, you eat kinke, wache, garish, gari, foto. That's your breakfast. <laughs> gari, foto, as breakfast. And here you are. The Lord is saying that, my daughter or my son, 40 days. Six to six for 40 days and pray one hour a day. If you can just obey, things will turn around in your life. Now, most of the time, our nature, your flesh, your hello, wants to be happy. You want to go to party. You want to eat. You want to do things that satisfy your flesh. Say amen. Sometimes you can come to church believing God. Eh? Believing God, Lord, this year I want to marry. This year I want to marry. This year I want to marry. And then suddenly a, a, a brother comes to you and the brother says, uh, Sister, thou seest the Lord. That, you know, I was praying, 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 praying. And as I was praying and praying and praying, you see, and I was praying, 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 praying. And as I was praying and praying and praying, then the Lord spoke to me clearly that you are supposed to be my wife. And you look at the guy. The guy doesn't fit all your description. The type of guy you want to marry. The guy number one, the guy is short. Number two, he hasn't got money. Number three, on Namza hasn't also been fear. One sister told me that, Reverend, me, I've suffered. I don't want to go and marry and suffer again. 
marriage must lift me up. <laughs> yeah, so he said, he said, Reverend, me and my mother, we have suffered. So marriage should come and lift me up. All these small, small boys are looking at me and they, 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 they want to marry me. Ah. So, when you look at this guy with his yellow shirt and blue jeans and green shoes on same fata. Now, oh no, me so bad and no. I know, is that they say it? So bad, I it's like this guy is daydreaming. And then when you go to bed, when you dream, you see this guy. Anytime you are dozing in the office a little, you see this guy with him going to lunch. You say, ah! This it cannot be. <laughs> Anytime you go, maybe you went to some prayer meeting be somewhere, and then a prophet came to you. Uh, uh, you stand here. You stand here. Uh, stand here. Stand here. You stand here. Uh, your name, v- 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 Tom Victoria. What's your name? What's your name? Victoria. What's your name? What's your name? Victoria. Victoria. Yes, yes, yes. Victoria. 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 And uh, stand. Have you finished yet? And. Uh, I see aeroplanes, aeroplanes around where you were. I see something like aeroplane. Where do you wear? Where do you wear? Where do you wear, where do you wear? please? Where do you wear? Africa World Airline. Airport, airport. With what airline? With all airline? AWA. AWA. What is AWA? Africa World Airline. Africa World. Mumba se, mumba se, bayesu, mumba se, bayesu, mumba se, mumba se, mayosu. After your dreams. After whatever, now you have gone to some prayer meeting. I put the microphone. I haven't finished with you yet. Uh, this is uh, there is a boy. Be there is a boy. Be a friend of George. Eh, George. Eh? Has somebody proposed to you recently? Then you say yes. What is his name? His name is George. Now all these things is pointing to the fact that even though your flesh doesn't want to marry this guy you are getting overwhelming evidence please sit down you are getting over all the things i said to the guy i already know it so it's not that i'm a royal prophet i know it she works with africa so she gives me free ticket then don't tell them don't give anybody else. so these things are all going to point that this guy who came to propose who doesn't look like anything is the one you should marry Maybe I've said the right thing. Maybe it's a great, very good God, George. Oh, okay. <laughs> Say amen. But you know, you don't want to carry this guy to be introducing him to your friends because already you have done some in church in some areas. Bigger guys have come, you have turned them down. And now this simple. Dummy pillar one guy <laughs> has come around. <laughs> but in your obedience is the blessings that will come in your way that you don't know. Yes. 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 If my wife hadn't married me, she would not be sitting where she is sitting. But 28 years ago, Pastor Mike, I was unmarriable. Yes. If I can, if they can Google my pictures and show you 19, the early, it was not a very easy girl. My, my, top your jaw. Very skinny. You see the way Elom is looking with his last stomach. My stomach was more flat than him. Very skinny. Very lanky. I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything at all. I didn't have anything. I don't have nothing. My home was broken. I was living with a friend. And then I have gone to propose to her. And everybody, friends, her own colleagues. Sometimes, you know, you know I used to go and visit her at the bank. And I would get down from the trotro, like a few distance, the stop be, before her place. 
because I don't want people to see me coming out of the trotro. So I'll come to, out of the trotro and then I'll walk to the bank. As soon as they see me at the bank, like, hey, Jane, Ukurunaba, Jane, Ukurunaba. They used to call me Ukurunaba. So I'll come to the cage. I say, how, how be? Because cars were coming to the bank to pick girls for lunch. Me, I've come from Trotro to come and chase a bank. In those days, you should see my wife very slim, very well, about lanky, you know, very smart, a nice bank girl. Banks, bankers were chasing her. Me too. My struggling life, I've come to also add to the chasing. Everybody including some of her relatives and things, everybody, the fellowship, were telling her that, oh, but this brother, what is he taking you to? This brother, one lady came and said to her, ah, now who brother, Steve Crow, no coin. And I did the chisa. And then everything. So one day I called her, I said, you know something, I know what is going on. I know exactly what is going on. Including your own parents and things, they are all against my marrying you. But you tell me, why don't you just move on? Leave me alone because me, I know God will take me somewhere. She said something I will never forget. After 20 something, I still remember. He said, I have heard from God. I have heard from God. He said, God has spoken to me that I should marry you, and I don't want to disobey God. I said, Really? I said, Look at me. I don't have anything. He said, I don't know. She, my wife will work and bring me all her salary. All her salary, including the coins in the salary. Yeah, you know, they pay you with coins in it. She'll bring me all the coins in the salary. She'll come and clean my room. You know, I have a small room at Taifa. She'll come and clean the room and everything. Do some jollof for me and do some kotombre. I'll be somewhere, do it somewhere. You come and do everything. Then she'll say, Oh, Steve, I've gone to do some. I realized that your, your kitchen was dry. So I've done so. I said, Thank you very much. Then he said, I have also left my salary on your desk in the, in the, in the drawer. Use it to to plan the marriage. And I would take the money, go to town, go and buy things, buy things. And I said, oh, I've left some of the money for you. He said, oh, no, I don't need it. I can get tips here and there. Because I was, it was at the teller, so people will give you some tips here and there. That's what she did. One day I called her and said, the way against all odds, you have still believed in me and you want to marry me. I will look after you tomorrow. God will don't lift me up and I will bless you tomorrow. Yeah. I told her Everybody was against my marriage. They, in fact, the, 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 the people who were going to add, they were sacked because they didn't want me. Because I said, I wasn't doing a good job. They said, I don't have a good job. I don't look well. Today, my story has become different. So the guy you are saying no to, you can't tell what God will do with the guy tomorrow. So, walk in obedience. Do what God is asking you to do and leave the rest in the hands of God. Just obey. Just trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus except you trust and obey. Are you there? The other day I was telling my wife that if you leave me, I will follow you to where you are going. <laughs> Whatever you are going, I'm following you there. So I will go and see what the guy has that I haven't got. Say amen. Are you there? I said, are you there? You see, many people are suffering today because of disobedience. God asks you to go this way, do that, and, and you, you, you won't do it. You won't follow the instructions. And it is, it's making you mark time in life. Your son, your only son. Your car, your only car. Your house, your property. A perfume, a shirt, a belt, some shoes, something you love. God said, give it to this family. You've got two cars. There is a family of four. And the husband and wife, they are six. They've been working to church. Say, give that car to that, to that, to that family. Say, hey, you ready? This one is not from, it's not from God. <laughs> Anytime you meet the family, now you must show 
Then their voice will come. I have told you, give them that car. So no. Then you go and tell your husband, husband, I feel that I must give this car to you. Say no. You know how men are. No. <laughs> but you see, you have matured to a place where you can distinguish the voice of God from the voice of your flesh. It's just that you don't want to follow the voice of God. And God is a very good God. When you don't hear him this way, he will hear him in the other way. He will show it to you in a dream. He will show, he will give you, look, he will give you overwhelming evidence that he's the one talking to you. He will give you overwhelming evidence. And there will be no ambiguity. There will be no question in your mind that this is God telling me to do something. But I'm telling you, it may be painful, it may be challenging, it may be very difficult, but if you take that step, you will see God in a way you have never seen God before. If you take that step, give so much to the church, do this for the ministry, follow it and obey. Follow it. Follow what God is telling you to do. What God is telling you to do for his kingdom. For in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. Say amen. Are you there? Me, my wife and I, we've done crazy things before. To people, and we are still doing it. We do all sorts of things. When the Lord says we should do this, we see us doing it. We do it. Sometimes it's not easy for us doing it, but we do it. I remember when the church bought me a nice, beautiful land cruiser. I was cruising, 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 cruising. Hey, I was, I used to polish it. Hey, polish it for wash, under washing, engine washing, hey, waxing. Well, I remember one day I drove the Land Cruiser here and then I got down and I saw Pastor Elisha coming this way and the Lord said to me, give your keys to the, of the Land Cruiser to him now. I said, no, you can be God. I bind all demonic voices in my head. Because it was my only car. I love it. I drive it. It's the most decent car in my house. I mean, the brand new Land Cruiser that I have driven for some time, I have been watching over it. I don't play with the servicing. If you know me very well, I'm very, very meticulous with servicing. So I said, Elisha, how? Yeah, you are blessed. Then I sat in the car. Then I sparked. Whatever to do it. Then the Lord came to me and said, I said, get down from that car and give the keys to him now. Hey! <laughs> wow. Then I took a phone and I called my wife. I said, you can't believe what I heard from the Lord. Then my wife said, not again. <laughs> because until then we have given like three cars. I've given, I gave a Mercedes Benz and I took the Mercedes Benz gave it to my father-in-law. And then I took her car, I gave it to Pastor Mike. Now, 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 I'm giving the He said, Land Cruiser is the only car we have here. I said, honey, if I move this car, something can happen to me. If I move this car from here, God can do something to me. So I'm giving the keys. I said, Lasha, come here. I said, Lasha, you see these keys? From today, this is your car. He said, Daddy, is that, Daddy, are you sure what you are telling me? I said, yeah. I'm sure what I'm telling you. And I gave it to him. From that time I gave it to him to now, God has blessed me every day. I will do it again. I will do, when I'm driving an infinity, if God tells me today to hand over the infinity, I will do it. I have come to a place that nothing is too difficult for me to give again. Anything I have, I've told him, I've told him, I said, God, anything you have given me, if you want it, I'll give it back to you. Anything you have given to me, if you want it, for the sake of the kid, I'll give it to you. Oh, yes. I'll give it to her. If I hear clearly, I'll give it today, today, today. What I'm wearing, my, anything, because I was nothing before. What do you have that you did not receive? And if you have received them, why then are you boasting? Why are you boasting as if you don't receive them? Your money can be in an account. You can have a fleet of houses and cars. You can wake up and tell yourself, 
well, I have increased in goods, I have money, I have properties. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Bahamas and kill and be happy and all those things. The, the, the Lord was the, thou fool, thy soul is required of thee tonight. Yeah. God can take you out of the world just a second. You can be here, look, you can be here today by the evening God has called you. Obey his voice. Say amen. Yeah, obey. And that is one of the ways to enjoy walking with God. Is to walk in obedience. Say amen. Are you there? I'm not saying something. Look, you don't know how I've battled with God for 30 years. Do this. Do that. Give this to this. Give this to that. Initially, when I, because I, you see, when you have been poor before and you get talent, you don't want to let it go. If you have been poor before, <laughs> if you haven't been poor, you were born into riches. Oh, that's why it doesn't matter at all. You know, my children, sometimes when I go from abroad and I shop for them, then they carry their shoppings. They carry their shopping, their friends, then they give their friends. I say, why are you giving, why are you giving the things to your people, your friends? He said, he said, oh, buy it's, 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 it's okay. He said, it's, a, it's a lot. I have some. I said, yeah, but give the old ones. I said, have you seen the label, the price on it? They don't even check the price. They just give. One day, somebody came to my house and was pulling some suitcase out of the house. I said, hey, some Samsonite suitcase. He was pulling the Samsonite suitcase out of the house. I said, I didn't talk to him, but I look at my son. I said, did you give it to him? I said, there are other suitcases. This one is called Samsonite. He said, I don't know. I said, that's why you must ask. <laughs> you know what I told me? Oh, that is okay. You can buy another one. I said, these people, you see, when you have suffered before, eh, you see, when you have suffered before, eh, when you see something, eh, you want to hold on to it. Samsonite. That I bought part to use. So that when I'm traveling, I'll be bluffing with it. I'll be pulling the Samsonite. <laughs> My son gave it away to his friend. He said, he hasn't got a suitcase to pack. I said, talk to me. I saw the boy pulling the thing. I look at the thing. <laughs> hey, <she may> be. <laughs> it's because my children, they haven't suffered. They have not been poor. They are not hungry. So they just... Give that, but if you have suffered before, hey, yeah. you just gave it. One day, somebody came to the house wearing a very nice dress. I said, Debbie, is that not the dress I bought for you? Yes, because uh, she hasn't got so. I said, Yeah, but did you talk to your mother? Oh no, it's mine. It's mine. I can give it out if I want to give it out. It's, it's, not, it's yours, but it's not like yours. <laughs> it's not yours like that. Then my, but you know what my wife told me? She said, they have taken your nature. I said, yeah, but this one is going, it's getting too much. <laughs> the boy who went to a crusade of Jesus Christ in John chapter 5, when there was no food, Philip came to Jesus and said, send the people away for they are hungry. And they, and they said, that Jesus said, give them food to eat. He said, we don't have any food except a little boy here with five loaves of uh, abolo and two fishes. But what are they among so many? Jesus said, bring that food. Bring it to me. They went to the boy to collect his five loaves said to me. Do you know how the boy would have felt? Do you know what the boy would have said? The boy would have said that. But we were all coming here. Didn't you people think of bringing food along with you? They took the lunch. And it was possible that the boy would have thought that as my lunch is leaving me here now, I'm going to starve. But the boy just obeyed. Obeyed and gave out all his lunch. Jesus took the lunch from the boy, lifted it up, and prayed over it. And brother, he blessed it. 
And everybody, over 5,000 men and women and children, had more than enough to eat. Oh, and the boy had more and carried home back to the mother. But you see, the boy obeyed the voice when he said, Jesus had need of your lunch. If you can walk in obedience, you will begin to flow in a dimension you haven't experienced before. Let go of your Isaac. What you love, if it is God who is asking you, let it go. Let it go. It is difficult. It is challenging. You will think about it. But if you can just obey, you will spend your years in prosperity and your days in pleasures. Say, I hear you, Pastor. But I want to tell you that sometimes it's not easy to obey the voice of God. It's not easy for you. For you, the Lord speaks to you and said, take, take five pieces of your cloth. Go and give it to your auntie that is living at Kutubabi. Five pieces of your cloth. Go and give it to your auntie at Kutubabi. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. God can be speaking to you to do certain things. You see, you can have a very large acres of land. You can clear the place. You can manure the soil and everything. But, and the clouds can gather. Except there is a seed. You can never see harvest. Look, you can stand on the, on the farm. Eh, and prophesy. And repeat your scriptures. And fast 90 days dry. You will die on that field. And let's not see one harvest. Because the ground is set. The place has been weeded. But there is no seed. In the ground. You can fast and pray. Believing God. Father. This is my year of prosperity. My year of breakthrough. My year of blessing. God, Abraham, Abraham. But if you don't obey. You will not see it. If you don't do what God is asking you to do. If you don't do what God has. He said in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying I will multiply thee. Because thou hast obeyed. My voice. Say amen. Are you there? In 1 Kings chapter 17, we see the story of 1 Kings chapter 17, we see the story of uh, the story of who? Elijah the Tishbite and the widow of Zarephath. And verse 13, of first Kings chapter 17, and Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me a little cake first, and bring it to me, and after make for thyself and for thy son. For thou sayest the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, and neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. Her survival was dependent on her obedience. If the woman has said, this is our last meal, I don't care whether you are a prophet or a prophetess, I don't care where you are coming from, but we cannot give our last meal to you. And she had walked in disobedience. She and her family would have perished out of hunger. So her survival was dependent on her obedience. Your breakthrough in life is linked up with your obedience. Oh, are you there? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. I know what it means for God to ask you to do something. And any time God asks you to do something, it means God has something in mind. He wants to see how faithful you will be. 
He wants to see how selfless you have become. He wants to see that the blessings don't have you, but you have the blessings. He wants you to come out clear because he's about to do. The Bible says, and the Lord tempted Abraham. So your God is tempting you to see what is in your heart. Whether you will serve God or mammon. Whether you will serve God or mammon. Whether you will serve God or beauty. Whether you will serve God or things. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of things he possesses. Are you there? Yeah. May the Lord help us to learn to walk in obedience. When Peter, when Jesus came and said, Peter, can I use your boat? And he took the boat and he obeyed and gave Jesus the boat. And the boat went. The boat came back with a net breaking and a boat sinking blessing. But he gave the boat. Learn to release what you have. Learn to give. Whenever you make a pledge on it, you took a, an envelope, you want to help the Zero. Do it. God is asking you to do something. Just obey for a friend, a brother, a sister, for the church, for the ministry. Just follow that. Follow that. Especially when you know that it's coming from God. That is why in this series, I will teach on how to hear from God. So that you will know that God is the one speaking to me. God is the one speaking to me. And God is going to bless you greatly. Between now and 31st of December, I see a divine shift. I see a divine rearrangement. I see a divine turnaround. There is going to be a turning around of your life. Because you have decided to walk in obedience. I love you. God bless you. Shall we rise? Thank you, Jesus. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word. All oh, the glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Oh Lord, trust and There is no other way to, to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no. We are going to pray through two prayers. The first prayer is that, Lord, give me the capacity, the strength, the ability to walk in obedience. Because sometimes I don't feel like obeying you. But I know your grace is sufficient for me. In the midst of my weakness, your strength is made perfect. Your hands are lifted. Say, dear Lord Jesus, this afternoon... As I lift my voice, as I lift my voice, give me strength. Give me strength. Give me the capacity. Give me the capacity. Give me the mental ability. Give me the mental ability. Give me the heart. Give me the heart to walk in obedience. To walk in obedience. Father, Father, help me. Help me. Because in me, because in me, I don't feel like obeying you. I don't feel like obeying you. But with you. your grace, but with your grace, I know I can do it. I know I can do Shall it. Shall we pray right now? In the name of Jesus. Father, this afternoon, oh God, we come to you. Give us the capacity, the grace. I receive grace to obey you in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk in your word in the name of Jesus. 
la brosca taya baba and the yoba zika taya baba hiribo sanda ya baba father in the name of jesus when you speak oh god father give me the grace to obey in the name of jesus in my doings and in my dealings oh god i need to obey you i receive the grace in the name of jesus akato yo baba hiribo sanda yo baba hikata yo baba yeneba anda yo baba zabros kendo yo baba anda yo baba zekata yo baba hiriba sanda yo baba hikata yo baba father anything oh god in me that causes me to rebel i receive grace and i overcome it in the name of jesus by your word is up to the heart i will walk in obedience yes. to your word in the name of jesus akata yo baba anda yo baba hiriba sakata yo baba abras kendo yo baba yeriba akata yo baba anda yo baba akata yo baba i will obey your word yes. i will obey your voice when you speak of god when you call i will obey in the name of jesus akapa yo baba biria kando yo baba akata yo baba hiriba sakata yo baba anda yo baba in my decisions of oh God yes. in my choices of oh God Father let me obey you let me do your will yes. so that the blessings of God will come to me let me obey that you will make provision in the name of Jesus Father I will not miss my pleasure because of this obedience in the name of Jesus I receive the capacity I receive the grace in the name of Jesus from this day forward help me to obey your voice help me to obey your word in the name of Jesus hiriba sata yoloba ando yoloba bayeleba akata yoloba ando yoloba akapa yoloba piria kando yoloba akapa yoloba ando yoloba piria kata yoloba ando yoloba in the mighty name of Jesus this afternoon oh God I pray stop taking my will unto you in the name of Jesus when I don't feel like obey father help me when I don't feel like obey help me in the name of Jesus ando yoloba ando yoloba iriba saka ando yoloba ando yoloba ando yoloba in the name kaso kasa Kasa na yeri tiwo Kaso Kasa Kasa na yeri tiwo Jesus Kasa Kasa Kaso Kaso Jesus Casa 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 na yeri tiwo Jesus Casa 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 Jesus, Casa. The next prayer I'm going to pray. Has God asked you to do something? From this afternoon, don't hesitate. Just do it. Yes, Lord. Right from today, has God told you to do something? Help a brother, help a sister, help the church, or do something that you have postponed? This afternoon, just go ahead and do it. Pray that the Lord will help you to do it. Yes, Lord, Pray right in now. the name of Jesus. Father, I receive the willingness and the heart to obey in the name of Jesus. That Come on. you have spoken, oh God. Lord, I receive the willingness, oh God. I will obey. I receive the heart to obey. I will do it. Yes, Lord. In the name yes, of Lord. Jesus. I will do it. I receive the willingness of God. They had to do it in the name of Jesus. In the force, in the power. 
that will push me, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I resist it now. I yes. pray in the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus, I will not, oh God, hesitate in Jesus' name. Libros Sometimes you come to church, and when it's time for offering, the Lord will tell you, give a hundred cities, give fifty, give this. Most of the time, when you hear the voice, you just do your own thing. But if you learn to obey, the Lord will bless you. Take an offering in your hand, come to the altar, and say, Lord, I am obeying, I'm obeying your voice, I'm sowing a seed, I'm bringing an offering. Come to the altar, give that offering, and, and let Him help you. Come to the altar. You are my strength and my reward. I'm lost without you. Your love pulls me through. My life is available to you. And now praise you. you. Tell God, help me to walk in obedience. Come down, there is a basket up there. My life, there is a basket up there. You don't have to come down all the way, but if you feel like coming, you can come. Holy Lord, you're holy. Help me to work in obedience. Lift your voice.